seems like we heard for decades how elevated HDL levels were protective because it was the good cholesterol. And you can see my air quotes, meaning it's probably not the case. Well, now we have a new study suggesting that that isn't the case, which is sort of adding to this swell of, of data suggesting that higher HDL levels are not necessarily protective. But let's get into the details, right? Because some of these details matter. Why is your HDL elevated? And what else is going on in your life, in your lifestyle, et cetera? These make a difference. Let's look at it. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this particular study is called Association Between High-Density Lipoprotein Cholesterol Levels and Adverse Cardiovascular Outcomes in High-Risk Populations and was published in JAMA Cardiology. So a couple things about this study that are important. First, it is in people who already had diagnosed heart disease, cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease. This is not in the primary prevention, no evidence of heart disease population. This was a higher risk population who already had diagnosis of heart disease, okay? So that's the first point. Second point, they, they just crunched the data from the UK Biobank um, data set and the Emory Cardiovascular Biobank data set. So this wasn't sort of predefined outcome following people from the get-go. This was looking back at these cohorts and crunching the data. So that weakens it a little bit, but doesn't invalidate it by any means. Then the next part is they looked at those above 80 milligrams per deciliter, and then the, compared to those between 40 and 60 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so those were the two main groups they looked at. So if you're in that 60 to 80 group, you kind of weren't included in this trial. Um, and what they found was, you know, fairly decent impact that the higher HDL group had a higher risk of mortality of actually dying. So the hazard ratio um, for increased risk of all-cause death was 1.96, really close to that 2.0 cutoff where these observational studies start to really warrant our attention. And then cardiovascular death was 1.7, so also fairly high. Now, interesting, it was much more pronounced in men than in women. So in men, it was 2.6, and women was only 1.39, right? So this these findings do seem to apply more to men than women, um, which is interesting because it's frequently, when we see levels that high, it's frequently in women and less often in men. So in a way, that's a good thing. But, you know, and of course, they also found low HDLs associated with the risk as well. And that's very common. That's very well um, understood and accepted that you don't want low HDL. So here's what's interesting. This concept of you don't want low HDL became, okay, well, then we want high HDL. Well, maybe not, right? Maybe not, especially if it's if it's just inborn because there are some genetic mutations and they tested for that, but we have to be honest, we don't know all the genetic mutations that, that cause um, high HDL, but the ones that we are aware of didn't seem to be affected in here. And we know from other studies, drugs that raise HDL haven't proven beneficial for reducing cardiovascular risk. So I think the key is to not have low HDL, right? That's number one, but that's not maybe necessarily the same as having high HDL. But, and here's a caveat, who were these people? What kind of lives were they leading? And we know when we just look at big swaths of the population, the general population, you know, they're not the healthiest people. They tend to have metabolic dysfunction. Um, they tend to be eating a high carb diet or sometimes even a high carb, high fat, hypercaloric diet. They tend to be overweight, right? This is the, the population we look at when we look at general population. So what we conclude is having naturally high HDL above 80 in people who fit this criteria is not protective and may actually have some negative effects. So one question is why could it have negative health effects? And maybe it's a sign of you know, decreased function of HDL. When you have HDL that high, maybe it doesn't work as well in terms of its reverse cholesterol transport or whatnot. Um, and maybe it's associated with other comorbidities, but that's so a potential mechanism. But the interesting thing is, well, what if you're not that type of person? What if you are, you know, a healthy weight and you're eating a low carb, um, higher fat, higher protein diet, which naturally raises HDL? What if you don't have metabolic dysfunction? Does a higher HDL still have the same impact? And that we don't know, right? Because that group wasn't studied, but I would propose that that makes a difference. The reason for your HDL elevation likely make a difference. And, you know, there've been lot, some studies looking at HDL particle numbers, HDL function tests. And while the, the data on that isn't uniform, I do think it helps to have a little bit of extra information, especially if you're concerned if the high HDL 
it has a negative impact. So I'd like to see a little more information about that as well. But the biggest thing for me is why is the HDL elevated and do you fit into this patient population? Or is it because you're eating a low carb diet and that naturally raised your HDL? Is that a different scenario? We don't know the answer to that. I'm just throwing out hypotheses, but I think it's worth exploring and worth looking at. Also, the really important thing though is the gender difference between males and females in this study and the vast difference in the impact high HDL had on them. Because like I said, most commonly it is women who we see this elevated HDL in, and I don't want women to get worried because that was much weaker data, much weaker impact um, than it was for men. So if you're a male with an HDL over 80, maybe time to take note, not think that that's necessarily protective and maybe worth getting HDL function testing and HDL particle numbers checked. Again, that's a little outside the data here, but from a clinical perspective of what I like to see, I, I like to see that information in that setting. But again, the key is don't have low HDL, right? Do whatever you can to improve your metabolic health, have a healthy body composition, um, eat a healthy low carb, whether that's keto, moderate, or liberal low carb, You know, at least an adequate, if not high protein diet. Um, do resistance training, right? Those things are going to improve your metabolic health and your body composition and likely naturally raise your HDL so you don't have low HDL. And that's the key um, from the best data we have to be associated with reduced cardiovascular risk. All right. Hope that was helpful. I think the HDL scenario is fascinating and far from having all the data we need. But as we keep getting more data, we'll keep updating you here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. If that was helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.